Hey, let's talk about alopecia areata, which is kind of a broad term for autoimmune causes of hair loss. So in this video today, we'll be talking about the different types of alopecia, how to recognize them, and more importantly, what you can do about them. Alopecia areata is kind of a generic term for patchy hair loss. Now, we're going to contrast that immediately with uh, telogen effluvium, which is sort of a, another kind of weird Latin sounding name for kind of diffuse hair loss. Now, you can get alopecia areata and telogen effluvium from sort of some of the same conditions like stress or malnutrition. But what makes alopecia areata and kind of the subtypes of that uh, different from regular kind of hair loss that's diffuse is it's patchy and it's autoimmune. Now what that means is is your immune system is attacking literally your hair follicles uh, and causes you to lose hair. Now there's alopecia areata which is kind of patchy and you know sometimes can kind of come and go. Sometimes people have a bout of it like when they're a teenager or a kid and they don't seem to have it again. Other times it can come on uh, as an adult and it can be a little confusing depending on what it looks like but just to make sure that you guys understand uh, male pattern uh, baldness which you can kind of see I'm getting right it's sort of diffuse right and it kind of tends to be on the crown of the head uh, telogen effluvium or kind of like regular hair loss for lack of a better term that you see like in thyroid problems and that kind of stuff uh, it's more diffuse and it's thinning but it's not like patches of stuff like in the pictures that I've showed you Alopecia areata, however, can be coin shaped or circular shaped, and it can progress to something called alopecia universalis or alopecia totalis, where literally you lose all your hair. Alopecia areata often is just combined to like the face and the head. Okay, now that's what it is. Why am I even talking about it? Because it's a sign that there's an autoimmune process happening. And, you know, in my practice for 20 years, that's what I've been dealing with a lot are people with all different types of autoimmune conditions. And alopecia areata is a condition that I've helped, that I've treated, but it's also a sign. It's kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a dash light that's saying, hey, immune system is abnormal. So the other thing I want to tell you, uh, like while we're talking about it, is there's another kind of alopecia, which I, real, I like even less. So alopecia areata is what we call a non-scarring hair loss, meaning uh, you lose the follicle, but the hair can grow back theoretically, right? Scarring hair loss means you basically get a scar where the follicle was and it's not coming back. That type of hair loss is often associated, at least what I've seen and what the literature says, with something called antiphospholipid syndrome. That is a very nasty autoimmune problem. So it's very important that you work with someone, whether it's a dermatologist or whoever it is, that you, that you know, what am I dealing with? Is this alopecia areata? Is this alopecia totalis? Is this scarring hair loss? A lot of times I've got to do a biopsy for that. I'll just say that in my practice in the last 20 years, every patient that, I, that showed up here that uh, had scarring hair loss, when we tested them, they had phospholipid antibodies. Now, phospholipid antibodies can be dangerous because they can promote a... Uh, kind of a clotting, they're pro-clotting. And a lot of people, they have full-blown antiphospholipid syndrome. Uh, what the first symptom they'll get is they'll go blind in one of their eyes because they get a, a blockage in one of the veins in their retina. But there's other things that can come along with that as well. So the big point about alopecia areata is it's an autoimmune problem and it needs to be treated that way. And yes, there are things you can do. Certainly there are uh, some pretty serious immune biologic mod uh, medic medications that people get given for that. But uh, there are other things you can do. But it, it really boils down to being able to understand what your immune system is doing in your particular case of alopecia. So there's lots of different immune system cells. There's uh, T helper 1 cells, T helper 2, CD4, CD8, cytotoxic, uh, natural killer cells. That all kind of alphabet soup sounding stuff. What, it's, what the balance and ratios and all that stuff is doing in you, that is your immunophenotype. It's your immune system fingerprint. And it needs to be assessed, it needs to be determined so that the doctor that you're using knows best how to treat your alopecia. Sure, alopecia is autoimmune, there's some generic stuff you can do, but you can get a lot better results, a lot more efficient results if you're looking at someone's uh, phenotype. At least that's been my experience. So, in this brief video today, I just wanted to bring awareness to you that alopecia areata is kind of a generic term, but it is not the same as regular, you know, diffuse hair loss, or it's not the same as uh, women that have androgen-induced hair loss. It's a different mechanism. It's autoimmune, and in that regard, it's more dangerous. Uh, it doesn't make it any less horrible than the other types, 
uh, but it is a clue that something else is going on in your immune system. And here's the thing about autoimmune conditions. Uh, once you have one, it's very easy to get another one because immune system tolerance has been broken. It's like a taboo that's been broken. And now your immune system can do whatever the heck it wants. And it can lead to other problems and other systems of the body and other symptoms. So please make sure you're working with someone that understands the total picture of what alopecia areata is, uh, what can be done about it, and the associated immune system issues that we've talked about today. Okay, I'll see you next time.